बट वो लेमैन लेमैन को इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट ऐप चाहिए तो इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट ऐप टाइप करेगा जो पहला आएगा और डाउनलोड करेगा अगर काम चल गया चल गया ही नॉट सो आई दैट वॉज जस्ट एन ऑब्जर्वेशन आई एम नॉट आई थिंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाउ यू थिंक ऑफ कॉम्पिटिशन देर आर टू थिंग्स विच आर हैपनिंग ड्यूरिंग लॉकडाउन लास्ट ईयर जब सब बंद हो गया था पीपल वर स्पेंडिंग टाइम इन द मार्केट और रात में देर प्लेंग पबजी एंड पबजी बंद हो गया तो इट वॉज कॉल ऑफ ड्यूटी मॉनिटाइजेशन मॉडल इज एब्सोलूटली इंस्पायर्ड विद पबजी वी आर वी वर अमेज दैट पीपल ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी एट थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड पीपल वर स्पेंडिंग मनी टू बाय पबजी गन्स एंड बैक पैक एंड एवरी थिंग एक पचास कॉइन्स में आप बैक पैक राइट अनुज कुनाल पारितोष अनिकेत वेलकम टू द बाबर शॉप रेजर्स एज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर टेकिंग द टाइम एंड यू नो कमिंग ओवर टू आर हम्बल अबाउट प्रिवलेज टू हैव यू एंड अनुज एंड कुनाल थैंक यू सो मच फॉर डूइंग द सेशन ये स्टडे फॉर द कंपनी सो रियली अप्रिशिएट दैट यू शुड डेफिनेटली डू दैट दे डू एन एंड टू एंड पब्लिक मार्केट्स नॉलेज सेशन for oh, nice. for corporates Super. yeah but just to give you guys a uh, just to give you guys a quick um, run through of uh, today and an introduction to uh, to us as well um barber shop was started as a hobby project to kind of introduce entrepreneurship and the difficulties of entrepreneurship to to um, our listeners it kind of became a place where a lot of people came in and expressed their views uh, and desires to become entrepreneurs themselves which was for us a hugely gratifying and uh, you know uh, made us acutely aware of how important enterprise building is for india as a country because you know it's uh, as and anuj we were discussing this the other day right we need a million jobs a month we are probably at 200000 so that deficit can only be created if people kind of can take the entrepreneurial leap and it need not be building businesses but it could actually be being entrepreneurial in their own way right um, it could be building new a business lines for the organization that they're working in or it could be investing in in startups themselves or investing in friends who are running their own businesses themselves so being a part of the ecosystem there is no one path to doing it but there it, there can be it it cannot be zero path like everyone has to play a role if they if they can um in that context uh, razor's edge actually became an idea became uh, very big when a lot of us who invest in startups as you know as early angel investors got together and said hey can we can we make this a more institutionally relevant uh, construct where we find early stage companies great founders large markets and instead of us kind of individually putting in small checks can we come together do it and also record that conversation on cameras so that the world can see what a founder equity seeker conversation is like right because it's portrayed in different ways there especially right now there is very high sensitivity you don't want we we feel that sometimes narratives show power dynamics that are not the right ones so we wanted to play our own role so it is you know i'll let mandar and megna introduce themselves as well but three of us represent 50 very enthusiastic equity seekers we love and you know we we are obviously a part of the community of founders but we love being part of early stage businesses i'm personally astounded by the quality of founders i sometimes feel extremely like what you were saying right very jealous and uh, <laughs> deeply uh, kind of you know inadequate when we see new age founders like yourselves because we just feel that we wish we could be as smart and see the market as as astutely as you guys do but um, uh, you know my name is shantanu i run bombay shaving company and bombay uh, barber shop at shantanu was started as a you know as a property within this within this ecosystem but has become big uh, and i'm privileged to host you at our offices and thank you for making the time I'll leave it to you guys. Hi, I'm uh, Meghna Narayan. I'm the co-founder of Wholesome Foods. Uh, seven years ago, we start started Slurp Farm, our first brand, which is a uh, healthy food uh, brand focused on young children, uh, and we're striving to be India's most loved kids food brand. Uh, I spent before that, I spent some time with these two at McKinsey, and some of you as well. Uh, and even before that, I used to swim uh, competitively for a very long time. So. Very excited to be here and hear the story of Liquid. And just a small, all four of us are married and we have kids, so we are like an avid user of <laughs> exactly. your products, and wow. we are already in love with the brand. So oh yay! Like, thanks for building it out. So. I know. Super. Always lovely to hear that. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm uh, Mandar. 
Uh, <clears throat> I work at Oyo. Uh, I run our uh, European business, which is a vacation homes business. And all of you, whenever you're looking for a vacation next time, <laughs> flying to Europe, I'm the guy to contact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've worked there for four years. It's my uh, uh, first and only experience uh, in sort of big time contact with, uh, with the startup world has left me fascinated and inspired. And in this group particularly, I'm in a minority of one where uh, you know I'm not a founder myself. So really excited to be here. Uh, of course, as some of you know, uh, I spent 15 years in McKinsey, uh, uh, had the privilege of working with these two and some of you as well. Um, had a bit of a break in between where I uh, taught at Ashoka University, did a spot of coaching. Uh, before that, in a past life, it feels like I was also a medical doctor. Uh, <laughs> and uh, now I live with Anita, my wife and my son Rishi and my parents uh, here in Gujarat. But super excited to be here and really looking forward to it. Right. Amazing. Arul, before we give uh, go to you, I think in front of you, you will have a sheet of the equity seekers. We are also getting used to our own language. No, no, of course. Right? So, we, um, you know, uh, the, these 50 equity seekers um, are, uh, you know, kind of come on the back of us. It's all of us in or all of us not. Um, and uh, we, for us, it is basically, we believe that we can help founders who are taking steps after we have so that the mistakes that we made are not are, are you know kind of visible to you or transparently visible to you and we are very excited about about partnering and being a part of the uh, being a part of the journey so um, uh, uh, that's the broad construct I think for us uh, typical check sizes would be between 30 lakhs to 1.5 crores that's where we kind of see a sweet spot and all of us participate pari Paso. so okay. that we can discuss that at the end but just thought I'll give you guys a sense of the concept. Sure, but sure. Uh, over to you, over to you. No, thank you so much. I think the privilege is all ours to be here. Uh, I think uh, we've gone through the investor list and a lot of unfamiliar names first to start with. <laughs> but more importantly, some of them are already our starting angels who kind of gave us the confidence to step out and start building something like Liquid. And we felt, I think the, the two, three problems which were very evident was one, I think there is widespread misinformation, whether it's health tech, whether it's their personal finance, uh, the kind of uh, uh, resilience people have in terms of their own wealth. Uh, people have tried to save a lot, but there's not much uh, which they have which can support their own livelihoods. And we said, why don't we build up, build something which makes them resilient to such downturns? Mm -hmm. And that's where Liquid started moving and we thought about kind of venturing deep into wealth tech. Uh, so coming back to ourselves, I uh, left McKinsey last year in August as an associate partner. Uh, in the LEAP practice. Essentially, my focus in McKinsey was to help uh, large conglomerates conceptualize digital businesses grounds up. Uh, we used to get deployed, uh, help clients figure out what should their digital vision be, uh, how should they start building it up, build that product grounds up and kind of scale it and hand it over to them and then move. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm Kunal. Uh, I take care of BizOps and investment ops here in Liquid. So, Starting from investment, sales, uh, marketing, customer service sits with me. Uh, technically, anything where there are chances ki you will get the first level of, uh, I mean, from the, from the customer, where you can get the first level of, is something that I'm the first <laughs> level of <laughs> uh, defense. Uh, so, uh, right now, trying to, uh, you know, build liquid with uh, uh, a, a great team, right? So overall, uh, trying to have a very deep analytics-based, uh, you know, cutting-edge investment team uh, have been pretty successful so far. So far in that as well, uh, enjoying the so-called pleasant Bangalore weather <laughs> and a decent traffic as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will have to say decent uh, on camera, right? So, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, Bangalore has always been special for me. Um, I started my journey in 2005 when I actually joined Wipro uh, along with Paritos. Uh, so me and Paritos uh, started having our association from there like 2005. Uh, one another fun fact is I was the uh, angel equity seeker in Paritos first startup. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I've seen the both, both part of it, uh, working as a founder together and also the another side of it. So while we were building this idea, it was a no-brainer. We were all in for it. So the journey has been so very interesting so far and definitely we'll continue to do that. So that's all about me. Welcome, Kunal. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Cool. So, hi, I'm Paritosh. Uh, I have been a techie for around uh, 
two decades now, mm -hmm. give or take. Uh, have been fortunate enough to be at uh, the forefront of a lot of uh, cutting edge technologies. Uh, I, uh, I was part of the team which built one of the first uh, private cloud installations in the world. I was leading the team which built one of the first web browsers for uh, smart TVs in, with Samsung. I, at one point in time, I was running a, uh, a taste graph which was paralleled only by Facebook. We were running huge, uh, uh, it was part of a recommendation engine that uh, that we were building. So did a lot of good things, then McKinsey came calling, joined McKinsey. Uh, at McKinsey also was uh, doing a lot of digital builds where I met these two gentlemen and uh, we have been together for four, five years now. And uh, that's, uh, and I mean that the drive to build something new has always been there and something which is built from technology. So I build large scale platforms, large scale uh, uh, products, which actually help people. Uh, and that is what I do. Aniket? Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, I'm Aniket. Uh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm managing the data analytics and finance function at Liquid. Uh, professionally, I have been into data analytics work team for about 15 years now. When, when data analytics was not a buzzword, right? <laughs> so I've been like write, start, writing starting from the forefront uh, about 15 years. I've been solving those data analytics problems for risk, portfolio management, quant modeling across regions, across countries. Uh, was in the US, India earlier, then went to Singapore and US and UK. At McKinsey, uh, I was there for five years. There also I was part of uh, multiple digital transformation and digital business builds, wherein we kind of build, uh, you know, digital businesses grounds up uh, for many banks and, and financial service companies. Again, I was leading the analytics and the data uh, transformation uh, strategies for that. Uh, I have, uh, at Liquid, I, I am responsible again for portfolio management risk, risk and uh, quant modeling. That is where, uh, you know, all the intelligence lies, right? So, in short, you know, if, if I were to say I'm the person who makes Liquid app intelligent. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so that's about me. Amazing. Absolutely. Uh, one of the feedback we got for season one was it's too McKinsey heavy. Very <laughs> clearly not that. listened to it. I'm <laughs> 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 the table. only one balancing factor here. <laughs> <laughs> you are the diver. <laughs> so, no, but uh, Aniket also happens to be my senior from I am Lucknow. So, I know him yes. for, for many years now. Uh, but welcome, uh, four of you, I think just um, stellar to see your journey till now and very keen to get to know more. Absolutely. Yeah. No, so let's dive a little deeper into what we are doing and what we are building at Liquid. Uh, I would just turn to screens for a couple of things. We will not bore you with pages, but uh, I think see where uh, we have gotten started is a segment which has historically been a very ignored segment, so to say. We are talking about retail, like lakhs and crores of retail stock investors who have been putting money based on gut feel, based on uh, non-scientific judgment. They have been losing money whenever the market has fall, fallen, they have always taken the brunt of it. So, but uh, essentially what we are trying to do is one, we are building a lot of context around your own equity investment. So as an equity investor, retail investor, you would get to know uh, what are the big red flags in your portfolio, how your portfolio has been doing in terms of its own health, uh, things that actually need your attention. We are building context around individual stocks, saying what is happening to the uh, a particular company at this point in time, which is driving the price action in the market, or from a fundamental point of view, what are the good, bad, ugly things. Mm -hmm. We are build, building a lot of analytical models around it, which simplify information and provide it on the la like mm -hmm. uh, at, at real time basis. The second thing that we are doing is we are empowering users with hedge fund grade equity research. And that's where Aniket and Kunal come in. They are building a very deep equity research uh, uh, mode wherein we do a lot of machine-based research, which throws out insights and actual recommendation. And there's, there's a thin layer of human advisors and equity researchers who take the final lens and do the sanity check. But that research gets delivered in a very easy to consume manner to the retail investors saying, these are the stock picks which are fundamentally researched and also are technically sensible at this point in time to invest into. So we are doing uh, specific curated stock recommendations. There is also portfolios and baskets of uh, stocks that you could invest into. But essentially powering them with ready to consume information, whether it's cleaners or stock baskets or these stock picks. But at the depth of it, we are essentially building a wealth advisory which will 
go very deep to users who truly require it, who have never been able to access it because of cost constraints, because of human biases, because of just scarcity of good advisors in the country. But at the very depth of it, we are building a full-fledged uh, wealth advisory, so to say, right now pub focused on public stocks, which could help you charter your own journey in terms of how do you want to build wealth over a long term, create your own portfolios, help you sort problems with your existing portfolios, almost in a very uh, health consultation uh, kind of a model. And all of this is done while keeping three primary uh, drivers in mind. One is it is extremely simple, very catchy, very easy to use. Second is we are making things extremely affordable to people who have never been able to access true wealth advisory. Third is we are kind of keeping ourselves away from any kind of bias, so to say. So we are not driven by distribution commissions, we are not driven by marketing fee. We charge what we charge to the end user and we keep it bite, bite size so that people could just come in and buy things that they really want to buy and they're not kind of forced to get into say something which they don't really need. But that's what we are building. We would kind of love to show you a little bit of teaser yeah. before we get into other things. So uh, there's a small teaser that I'll just bring on part. So as you can see, I think a lot of uh, uh, initial traction is coming from people who have been really struggling with figuring out where should they put money, how should they put money. Mm -hmm. There are certain uh, products in the market which are absolutely inaccessible for the small scale retail investors. Talk about say PMS, which has a minimum ticket size of 50 lakhs. Uh, but if you look at what PMS does, it's absolutely the need of even the small scale yeah. retail investors who want somebody to just handhold them to the next level to let them make the right judgments. Uh, there is proliferation of a lot of influencers, a lot of informal platforms, whether it's Telegram or WhatsApp uh, and so many other channels. And there's just too much excess of information. So that's where the entire point of context comes in. And we are making it very simple, very heavily tech driven like the bot you just saw. You could just go and ask question to the bot, the bot automatically senses if you have got a particular position in your portfolio. And it builds on top of that. So the advice or the recommendation or the commentary that comes in, it's very contextualized, very easy to consume. It's for the layman who doesn't know anything about stocks, doesn't know anything about uh, uh, equity as such. And the market is kind of, if you, if you look at how big the market is in India, the market I think is like hands down the largest in the world. Uh, over the 36 months of COVID uh, lockdowns in India, uh, the number of DMAT, retail DMAT accounts have gone up from 50, 60 million to almost double in number, crossed a 100 million mark this year uh, on the retail side. Uh, the activity levels in the last uh, two years have really shot up. In fact, there was a huge divergence after the second COVID wave wherein uh, cases were high, but still markets were kind of maintaining still, their levels exactly. and eventually kind of they started moving up. And that's where Liquid was born because when we were into second wave, of COVID, we started talking to people. We were still on our idea board. Uh, and we started with these informal sessions where we used to coach kids, technical trading. We used to take live sessions. They used to come on board and we used to show like, this is how we are trading and this is how we are making a little bit of short term money. We did that for two months. Uh, kind of a few hundred people went through that entire grind. 
and we went back to our first cohort <laughs> just to find that nobody did anything with it. Like after like hours of us coaching them, trying to help them, nobody did anything. And the reasons were very common, right? Like we don't, we didn't have time, uh, right? Oh, we'll come back to it, but yeah, I just got busy. More importantly, we didn't have confidence. Mm. So we were just we were following something, but we didn't have confidence to put that money, and that's where Liquid actually took shape. So from an initial edtech kind of a form, it very quickly moved into a formal digital product, which kind of handholds you. And even if we are not there, mm. we're just trying to substitute ourselves with a with a with a with a friend that you could have in your pocket, digital in nature, who could help you do all of these things. But the market is insane. It's supposed to ex keep exploding for the next eight to ten years. Uh, it's the era of equity, retail equity investors. For the first time in the industry, equity retail participation is very close to the uh, Indian domestic institutional investment, which is a big number to look at. So that's where we are. And I think where we are kind of right now, uh, kind of hitting really great chords with our initial set of inv uh, investors on the platform is two, three things. One is, of course, cost, as I said. Most people didn't do it because you can't spend 40,000 rupees if you have a corpus of two lakhs to invest. But more importantly, people do understand that this industry never had like human experts of that level at small, like talk about tier three, tier four, wherein the talent itself is not there. You would talk mm -hmm. to people who still invest on gut basis. They might be registered and qualified on the paper, but in uh, uh, essence, their advice doesn't hit. Uh, the other thing is some infrastructure which we have here, like the API ar architecture, the openness in terms of the brokerage platform, it never existed for somebody like, like this to kind of something like this to take shape. And we are just trying to make the best use of whatever is there currently, but there, there are also forward looking disruptions like aggregators coming into India and a lot of financial information being available mm. for somebody like us to consume. So we are building an, an architecture which could consume forward looking information and build on top of it so that your real effort doesn't go into looking at your portfolio or following stocks. The real effort kind of boils down to a few minutes of your engagement over a month, wherein you are literally swiping cards and buying things. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, would love to also show you uh, the app we are building. Yeah. It's already live. It's there in the market. And then just come to a little bit of traction before sure. uh, the next part. So let me just put this up. I'll just. No, but see, this is uh, this is what it is right now. Uh, the onboarding process to this is very simple. We are integrated with six brokers. These are all uh, modern age discount brokers, uh, including Virodha, Upstocks, Grow, uh, Five Paisa, Dhan, and Angel One. We are in the process of getting more brokers on board, but uh, the onboarding is very simple. You log in with your existing brokerage accounts, and the moment you are on the platform, the AI starts taking charge. One of the first things that you'll see is uh, the portfolio health. This is where the context starts building. So it already senses what do you have in your portfolio. It gives you a little bit of commentary around your portfolio health at this point in time. It gives you a few more artifacts that you would not realize as a, as a, as a layman investor, which is what is your investment style, things around your index performance to how the market is moving, et cetera, et cetera. Almost on the lines of Apple health is what we are building. But more importantly, if you look at it, it actually starts telling you what is wrong in your portfolio. And that, that's where things become interesting. So you would see that I've got like a few red flags. There are a couple of investments on which uh, something is going wrong, which I may not track or may not know on an ongoing basis. And uh, the, the system basically culls them out and shows it in front of you. Again, the next level to it is, say, uh, particular stock, won't take brand names, but it's low on liquidity. Uh, what you could do is you could kind of go back and assess this portfolio stock by yourself. So there's a long-term score which is crunched on multiple data points, several uh, inputs coming to us in terms of fundamental, technical, market news, company events, so on and so forth. But there are very simplified stock insights here, right, in terms of what the stock is going through. So sentiment is bearish. The market pricing may be fair yeah. valued at this point in time. The profits are dipping. Uh, and it could give you a little bit of judgment whether to hold or sell, etc. But more importantly, if, if you still don't understand that, then this is where it becomes really interesting, wherein uh, our bot senses that you already have this stock in your portfolio, this is your starting position, you can tell the bot that you want to remain invested, that there's a certain horizon that you're looking at, and you could kind of just let us know. And the system basically crunches data and tells you what has to be done, so there's, that's where the commentary will kind of come in. and. Uh, this is where Limo comes in. So you would get like a stock report at the end of the day. 
and that stock report uh, basically tells you whether this particular stock is uh, good, bad, ugly, and what, what should you do with it. So it's like a very informed friend, more like an expert sitting in your pocket that you could trigger at any point in time. And there are other things around uh, like particular stock picks that we give, wherein you would, whenever there's a new stock which is interesting, we'll tell you, we'll give you very simple understanding of what uh, is working for the stock and so on and so forth. But I think coming back to the overall proposition, uh, this is still the MVP that we have tested out. Uh, we have about 130,000 downloads in the last couple of months of our presence in the market. We have about 25,000 monthly active users on the, on the platform, out of which uh, more than 8,000 users have actually transacted. Uh, and uh, this number is kind of growing by the day. And uh, what we are now heading towards is a far more, as Aniket said, he's making the platform far more intelligent. So in the next version that you would see, it will start talking to you. So it will start telling you what should you do based on where your position is. So you, not everything would be kind of relevant to you as an investor. So there are like 10 propositions packed into one single app. Now we'll help you also navigate through that. We'll tell you what has to be done today or this week so that you don't have to worry about everything else. Idea is just, you should just, you should be able to sleep on the investment that you make through Liquid and we'll make investing far sooner than what it is. But uh, kind of, I'll take a pause. This is what we wanted to kind of showcase for a start. Amazing. Cool. Uh, so for the uninitiated and those who don't invest, how, why, do they, why should they believe you? Yeah. No, so I think trust is the core factor, right? Uh, uh, in this particular uh, industry, I think wealth always proliferates when there is trust uh, among the user base. Uh, there are three, four things that will lead the users to believe us. We are still in our early days. Yeah. And one big reason for people to believe us is the transparency that we bring in, whether it's our pricing model in terms of how do we charge, there's no distribution commission, there's no conflict of interest. The transparency in terms of your own self, everything is data driven, everything is inside driven. Yeah. So there's nothing that we are hiding from you. Whatever is there, it's, it's there in black and white. Yeah. There is a performance history that we are building. So on the app, you can sure. transparently go and check what have we recommended, how's our small case performing. In the most turbulent situation, like which is the last five months since the onset of the European war, uh, we have had a hit rate of about 80% in terms of our recommendations. These are all fundamental stocks we give. We never yeah. play into small stocks, penny stocks. We always go for long-term investments which are good in nature. And eventually, I think what is now starting to build up is that there is a definite word of mouth which has started to grow. So it's easier for people to believe if a friend is talking about it. And that's where we have got folks who are already using the service and who are kind of uh, uh, talking about it in their own circles. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a it's a it's yeah. a slightly long drawn journey. It will kind of happen in time. But I think yeah. the core principle is to keep things very transparent, uh, kind of refrain from any kind of conflict of interest. And we believe that will kind of aid this entire vision of bringing sanity and uh, building the trust. No, amazing to hear you hear your story. I think, uh, and congratulations to to four of you and your teams for for building something in challenging times like COVID. In turbulent markets, like you said, over uh, you know, yeah. from okay. public equity standpoint. Insane markets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but my question to you was, I heard a number the other day that 89, 89% of Indian retail equity investors are financially illiterate. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's large. Yeah. That basically tells me that 10% of people are making money off the other 90%. Yeah. And the other 90% are basically making investments off of information that is either dated or or inaccurate or the judgment is kind right. of wrong, right? Right. Um, is your product for that? In which case, does it kind of democratize uh, public market investing in some way? Yeah. No, so absolutely. I think our product is very much there. Uh, we want to democratize public uh, investing. I think uh, the problem of uninformedness has been age old. In fact, this 90% number is still a much better number than what you would have like 20 years ago. Uh, so we are on a track to being a more literate market. I think investing in mutual funds, investing in other smaller products, uh, even digital payments has led to that level of comfort that people understand what digital money is all about. We are kind of trying to cater to a generation which has never failed those uh, hard notes, right? They have never failed, like never, never withdrawn like one lakh rupees and 
felt that fear of keeping it in the pocket. Uh, right? These are people who would spend 1 lakh rupees digitally and money is just a number for yeah. them. Right? Yeah. Uh, so that's the generation we are trying to cater to. So a lot of things are contributing towards uh, education of the user. And we want to play a very dominant part in doing that. I think this number will go from 89 to 80 to 70 to some other number as we develop as an economy. I think that's one marker of a developing to a developed economy when the investors understand where they are putting money in. Yeah. So you want to be that peg and an important step in that journey of leading to that. And that actually also gives us a right to play. Because there are a lot of information seekers in the market who would want to know this, but nobody is telling them because of whatever reason. And uh, that's our market to play in. So we are right now kind of, uh, it adds to our overall uh, growth trajectory if there are so many people trying to find the information. So that's where we are. And another and thing to uh, add in the uh, financial literacy is, uh, now that everybody thinks that we should be, you know, getting deeper into these areas. So there is a plethora of information and it's very, very difficult for people to figure out as to yeah. what they should consume and what they should not. Yeah. Right. So that's what we are trying to solve for. If you, you should have seen the card, right? We are just giving you two, three pointers that you should know and rest everything. Let it there with us as an expert and we will guide you as to what you should be buying and more importantly, why you should be buying it. Right. So when we actually give some sort of idea to people. We also talk about why you should be investing in, right? Mm -hmm. So that is also very, very important when it comes to the literacy part. What's competition like and what's your right to win? Yeah. Uh, see, so competition right now for us is very lean, so mm -hmm. to say, because if you look at the public equity stack as such, yeah. uh, there are manufacturers or executors uh, at the bottom of the stack, which are brokers, there has been a huge proliferation of discount brokers in India, yeah. many, many millions of accounts getting created. Yeah. Uh, there are advisory services or robo services, which are kind of built on slightly lesser uh, risk asset classes, which is say mutual funds and bonds, etc. Uh, if you look at advisory propositions on pure play public equity, there are very, very few. Understood. Most of the public equity advisory happens through human advisors, uh, yeah. which again uh, doesn't have the scale and uh, the affordability point is not there. So I think this entire bit of combining uh, analytics, delivering it digitally, making it scalable, etc. There are very few players who are operating there and we are very complementary to some of the existing kind of uh, players in the current value chain, right? Like a uh, lot of brokers would want their uh, retail investors to do sane investments to start earning money. It helps their cause as well. Understood. It helps their AUM as well. So we are complementary in that sense. Uh, we are complementary to old uh, or incumbent uh, uh, players in the market because we can power some of their existing propositions through a lot of deep analytics that we are building because that's kind of our core. Uh, so direct immediate competition like to like is lesser, but from a user uh, mindset point of view and of course wealth occupies a certain uh, space in your uh, overall uh, uh, scheme of things. Uh, there are of course other players like mutual funds of course has been one big category everybody that we get to like 90% yeah. of our users have some exposure to mutual funds either through robos or through uh, actual banking platforms. Mm -hmm. So that is competition of sorts but again it helps us because they actually wanted to put money like there's a definite latent requirement of need of putting money into public equity. So it helps us key. they have exposure to mutual funds. They have not gotten that kind of return. Most mutual fund like 85-90% of the mutual funds underperform the index. Right. Exactly. So our advice to them typically is very simple, right? If you want to put into a diversified basket, use an ETF, lesser uh, expense ratio, uh, your money will grow as per what India grows, which is very healthy. And if you want to really take a shot at building long term wealth, then get into a few positions, hold them through thick and thin of the market and gun for slightly higher disproportionate return from a small percentage of your investment. Just to add to that and I actually build upon that. Uh, see, this is kind of a new category being created. There are very few players who are right now into this because this is a personalized uh, investment advisory which was always a big man's game right it is yeah. it was always for the rich men yeah. people who who used to get it through uh, expert advisors because they were humans and humans 
have their own cost but what we are trying to do is uh, create a replacement for that expert uh, human advisor through technology and so this is a new new category new uh, and this is for the middle class the i mean so as to say uh, people like us right people who are salaried people who are uh, who don't have that much to play with so this this one has got uh, competition in terms of mutual funds and i mean mutual funds sahi hai bahut din se chal raha hai so it is like mutual funds sahi hai kya no we won't go there but uh, yes but equity zyada sahi hai because at, at a mutual fund has the same inherent risks that equity has just that isme you need someone to help you with data and whatever we are trying to do right so ye ek naya category we are creating mm-hmm. I think just uh, one quick rejoinder. Then I do have a, 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 a few fairly basic questions. I think more for my education probably. But just one quick rejoinder, na. I think uh, and an observation perhaps is I think given that as you described your app is for the layman and you're looking to democratize, I think you have to begin with thinking of anyone who shows up when you type equity investment app yeah. as competition. Yeah. yeah. and i think you will find that how you're defining your category while that i absolutely understand uh, is differentiated and everything you said i'm listening very clearly yeah. i agree with you yeah but you're talking to the layman yeah usko malum nahi hai sab yeah to uske liye ye sab ek hi hai and actually as while you were talking i did type equity investment app and i did see 15 names and yeah. they are not in the, i mean i can imagine you thinking ye ye to kuch alag hi kar rahe hain right बट वो लेमैन लेमैन को इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट ऐप चाहिए वो इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट ऐप टाइप करेगा जो पहला आएगा वो डाउनलोड करेगा अगर काम चल गया चल गया ही नॉट सो आई दैट वाज जस्ट एन ऑब्जर्वेशन आई एम नॉट आई थिंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाउ यू थिंक ऑफ कंपटीशन बिकॉज आई वरी दैट थिंग्स लाइक कन्वीनियंस मे विन ओवर क्वालिटी ऑफ एडवाइस विच इज रियली योर बिकॉज अगेन इज अ लेमैन दे डोंट नो वॉट दे डोंट नो आई डोट आई एम अ लेमैन ऑल्सो वेन इट कम्स टू इक्विटी इन्वेस्ट आई डोंट नो वॉट आई डोंट नो कन्वीनियंस लग रहा है मुझे लग रहा है शायद इसके पास भी होगा कुछ एनी वे दैट वॉज जस्ट एन ऑब्जर्वेशन आई टू थ्री वेरी बेसिक क्वेश्चन या वन इज दैट how how does the monetization work here is it a commission is it a subscription model how does can you talk about that for a bit uh, maybe i can take it yeah, yeah. so uh, basically uh, we are we are actually eng- we see like across the entire massive funnel that we have created of 1 130000 uh, round rolls right we see engagement all, through all levels so we have people who are just coming out so for some bits of information like what is happening in the markets today what is happening to the stock today what is my uh, stock positions like right so just basic information then we have also people who are uh, coming for the next level saying that what is how is my portfolio held doing what are my red flags what are my challenge areas then we have people coming in for recommendations as well wherein what kind of recommendations we are doing and for each of these activities we have bite sized payment information so for example each step you do you pay a micro payment this thing for every step that you do we you we charge a small fee right which is in line with what you want and then if you want all these services together then what we have is a subscription fee which is like an all season pass right okay. it says that okay if you want all services on the app this is my like quarterly fees or my annual fees you pay it all and then you have all services so you have the option for bite size information as well as you have an option for an all season pass and all of these are very fairly priced as compared to you know whatever you like very very low as compared to what an advisor would cost you in the that market what is it what's the subscription all uh, season pass how much is it so right now the all season pass is like uh, 999 for quarterly cool. and uh, like 2999 for uh, annually correct cool. and actually the inspiration when we were building this mandar was there were two things which were happening during lockdown last mm-hmm. year jab sab band ho gaya tha people were spending time in the markets or at me they were playing pubg and pubg band ho gaya so it was call of duty <laughs> monetization model is absolutely inspired with pubg where we were amazed that people 26 28 30 year old people were spending money to buy pubg guns and backpacks and everything else like 50 coins mein aap backpack kare so same reaction uh, but uh, that's what that's what kind of inspired us to say okay let's build a coin currency simple aapke paas ek certain number of coins hain aap usko kahin bhi burn kar sakte ho there's no no kind of uh, hard and fast pull from us aur agar aapko subscription nahi chahiye to aap use karke dekh lo and if it's not for you then be on the platform but stay informed right and so that's how we are so but doing. there's no uh, margin or uh, hmm. cream of the top and nothing of that sort uh nahi so you don't make money if the consumer makes money 
No, so right, yeah, right. So we are, and that's how we are kind of also incentivized to let them take the right call. No, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct, yeah. correct. So we'll make you exit when we think that the logical uh, uh, point upper point has reached. reached. There's a target which has been hit. We'll very point blank, the app right. will give you Sell a curve. simple notification, right swipe, curve, spell curve. But is that a, like for consumers who like, like for someone like me, I like when my PMS has skin in the game. Mm -hmm. huh. So I, I'm like, okay, cool. You and I are on the same side. Right. You have skin in the game. You make money when I make money. So I trust you. Right. Mm. But right. in your right. mind, you're saying you don't want alignment of incentives because you feel that breaks trust. Why would you feel that way? No. So see, in, in this space, in fact, it's a regulated space, right? Uh, if you are delivering an advice wherein we are also putting money, that's a direct conflict of interest as well, right? Okay. If somebody is big enough in the market who can move the market, then they would actually, <laughs> they would want to do that. Yeah. If I'm putting money today, I should rather like let Just people also. Yeah. So that's a false rally. So usko humne, and we thought about it. Yeah. That was definitely one idea on the uh, table earlier. Ki apna bhi paisa dalte hai. Hum log to dalte hai. We have been burning money Correct. and making money. Uh, so the way we have kind of taken care of that problem is ki transparently her recommendation platform pe hap usko search sort kar sakte ho, cut bhi kar sakte ho. There's a data slicing that you can do on what we are recommending. So that kind of gives us a little bit of credibility. Ki, hai, we are not putting money because of all these reasons, but we are telling you transparently what has been the return on liquid. We publish it on social platforms saying this was our return for this particular month. And this is how much we have made. Our recommendations have done this far. 80% hit rate, around 6-7% of return on a monthly basis, what we have been clocking for the last six months. Uh, which has given us that little bit of right to play there and that's... When you say 80 by hit rate, what does that mean? Like your recommendations have worked but with, with a small time window, right? No, no. So, yeah. So, what we... So, we are right now kind of... Uh, and Kunal should talk more about it, but we are uh, horizon agnostic. Uh, the team comes with, with a set of recommendations. And hit rate se matlab ye ki kitna osman target hit kiya and kitna Yeah, so, uh, so think of it like we have three different categories that we are trying to solve for. One is the short term. So short term is anywhere lesser than three months and then comes the mid term. So three to 12 month horizon and then anything more than a year is a longer term. But our longer term horizon is not like 20 years or 50 years wherein my kids or my grandkid will enjoy that money. So our, <laughs> so our idea is for a longer term like anywhere between one to five year types. right? And then based on whatever fundamentals we define, whatever technicals, right, we uh, define us, I mean, we, we enter in the in the game with a proper game plan. This particular stock, mein when I'm buying it, for a, let's take one example, right? For the shorter term, my idea is that uh, based on all the setups that I see, based on all the fundamentals, quarterly news, kaise aaye hai, how the global market is performing in this particular sector, my idea is I'll take 8% return in next two months or so. The moment I hit 8%, I'll exit that trade, right? Mm, so that is what has happened overall. If you see our app, overall like 70, 80 recommendation we have given and every uh, four out of five has actually met the target. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So if you'll go to our app, you will you will be able to see ki, uh, you can slice and dice obviously and then see ki con -con stock hai, when we recommended, what was the target? how much percentage we earned in how many days and just may have a stop loss it was because that is also very important for people to know right that when to actually uh, I mean exit because sometimes what happens is when you're when you are into a losing trade most of the time our behavior is we become a long term investor in our losing trade yeah. right we keep holding it and then it keeps going down and down right so that's what we are also trying to solve for. So in our app, pe, those things are very clearly mentioned. So this is what I was talking about. Like on this yeah, and just one more, you mentioned regulatory. I did have a question on yeah, that. Well, what kind of license is that? What do you, yeah. since it's a new category, as per the regulator, what are you? Are yeah, no, so we are right now, a, 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 sorry, a research analyst, a registered research analyst as an entity with Got SEBI. Where we are heading is an RIA, which gives us license to play across portfolio and across asset classes. So you are licensed to advice based on We are research. licensed to comment on any stocks right based now. Based on research. That's what we are doing. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you charge subscriptions to kind of give that advice out. Broadly. Give that so that's what. So it's bite size as well. If you just want one stock advice, then Who you will. Yeah. Who will. So you subscribe karne ki aise, like there's no Very need clear. to subscribe if you don't really want. Out of these 8K people that have actually transacted, have you found out why? Like what what is it that made them do the jump? Yeah. So, see, if you split this 8K, I think there are three very clear segments to us. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there is one segment of current financial guys. We ignore like 1,000 people there who are trying to understand what these guys are building. These are people who are just testing our product out and transacting. So, let's take them out, right? There's a middle youth segment of people who are trying to understand things and 
a lot of new information is being thrown to them. Sure. So these are the people who are asking us the limo queries. These are the people who are taking bits and pieces of trades. Uh, these are the people who are kind of coming in and checking out their portfolio health, etc. So these are the people who are going through that process of discovery. Ki, oh, ye bhi hota hai. Oh, aisa bhi ho sakta hai, right? Mm. That's that's a big chunk. And then there are about the last thousand people who are staying us and who are buying subscriptions because they felt that it genuinely kind of helped them achieve a certain cause, whether it's a return, whether it's getting their time uh, freed up from this menace of monitoring portfolio, etc. So those are the people who are like now realizing value out of one or two of, out of the seven, eight propositions we have. Understood. And they have the conviction to then go ahead and buy stuff. So there are people who are buying coins as well on the platform now. Hmm. Uh, and using them, then after you buy like three, four hundred coins, you get the conviction. Then you say, "Acha, three hundred spent gaya. Let me spend like thousand or three thousand and get the seasons pass and get everything for free, uh, for how many number of times you want to use." Okay. But the true value that people are getting are, I think, two, three fold. One is just the basic clarity of thought in terms of what their existing portfolio was. So one big problem with most of the propositions you'll see in the market uh, is that they are agnostic of what. You are you have done in the past. They're just they will, throwing information. Yeah. They are just you. throwing information at you. Yeah. And it is uh, it doesn't take into your past like past context into picture. We are doing that in some some sense. So at least you would yourself get to know how your past picture is. That's point number one, uh, where people are finding value. Point number two is I think just the sanity of advice and the clarity with which we just tell you that why this stock is good, bad, ugly. Mm. I think that also works very well. Uh, and at the end of day, I think it just. It has little bit of everyone for it, like anyone who comes on board, and that's where I was saying that the next version would be tailor made to what you want. We will not confuse you with eight things. We tell you two simple things: ki aaj ye kar lo, and you are golden. That's where we are heading. And, and tell the, sorry, sorry, just again, I'm still on yeah. understanding yeah, the sure. mechanics of the app. The eight thousand transactions. How do you know that they happen? They happen through the app. Yeah, of course. So, so but don't you get no? some payment gateway ch no, no. type of so, charges for that? Because somebody used your platform to make a transaction using another broker, right? Ah. So shouldn't that broker be paying you something? Yeah. No. So let me actually, in fact, Paritosh could break down the technical journey for you. Maybe uh, you should just explain the flow. So uh, see the uh, the transactions that we are talking about are uh, any of the events, any of the six type of events that have occurred, right? People took some trade. People asked uh, asked us a question. They checked out their portfolio. Health. They uh, uh, took a small case oh, through us. So these are different transaction types. Sorry, my bad. I thought yeah. you were talking about purchase of equities. No, no, right? purchase no, of no, equity no. is just one, yeah, one type one, of transaction one, that you. But did. for that one type, you help the, the broker. Yeah, yeah. so yes. it it happens through our platform. You don't have to go out of the app to purchase a stuff. You just right swipe, and we have integrated with as he said, six uh, brokers, and there you do. But if you if you are not on one of those brokers, then you can then take you it from outside. See, but that isn't that a monetization opportunity? No, so those six brokers are getting business yeah. for free, right? No, so, see, these are discount brokers, right? Uh, these are brokers who themselves don't earn money on cash, uh, and, carry. cash and carry. They earn money on option trader. Trade. Mm. So uh, we have, and that's where we are aligned, right? So there's no distribution commission, there's no brokerage commission, and therefore we are Action. very like open and like we could take any call that we really genuinely feel uh, about exactly. there's no kind of external force trying to do that but I, yeah do you don't need to sorry you don't need to get out of the app we don't we don't access your funds which are there with the broker we don't access your actual underlying stocks which are there with your depository participant so all of those things are beyond our uh, that reach data stays and that also gives us credibility yeah, exactly. we will never do something that you don't know it's always done by you sorry Absolutely. Anike, that yeah. interrupted you no no so i was just saying uh, that there is, we see the previous point, there is a clear evolution that we are seeing. So initially people, when they come to the app, they use coins, right? They use 50 coins for a report or 100 coins for a trade or something, mm -hmm. right? So so we see an evolution and that as as the customer moves, so as the funnel is huge, you can see that there's initially like the big chunk of people are actually moving more towards subscriptions, right? So as they realize the value, so initially per person will come, just like in PUBG, right? Initially will come, you'll buy the gun, you'll buy the 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 uh, armory and stuff like that and but then eventually you will buy the the vip pack right so so that way it's like a it's like a journey that we see going from one so uh, movement from points yes yes one of the most uh, amazing things at least when i first downloaded liquid and saw it right is to your point bandar around convenience mm. is i love that you guys have really focused on ui ux like right yeah. swipe to buy, right. for example, is such a youthful, uh, you know, kind of use case. 
I don't think like for example for the pre pre Tinder generation that makes <laughs> sense, right? Right swipe to buy, left swipe to reject. The, the, the little bit of backstory is that none of us were on Tinder. <laughs> You're living your life. We built a Tinder first. <laughs> so at least we get some opportunity to write. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, to my question. Your wives are definitely watching. <laughs> yeah, they are. That's why he said we are. They are left swiping. So they are watching Barbara Shaw and left swiping. <laughs> But my broader question was, I think game to scale liquid to being the one stop destination for equity investing in India will be as much about the quality of advice as it is about the user experience and convenience sure. yeah. to your yeah. point. Just the whole, the beauty of the app, the social yeah. integration, yeah. you know, celebrating people who are amazing investors Convenient. and making them influencers or, you know, kind of rock stars on liquid yeah. is, is, do you guys focus on the product in that way as much as you do on the financial aspect of it? Yeah, and I think I can talk about it because product is kind of largely tied to me here. But uh, see, we have spent enough time, even in our previous lives, in building products. And uh, we have learned through several years of developing products for different kinds of audiences. Uh, some of the scaled up and inspirational startups in India have now shown what a great UX can do yeah. to the product. So from day one, even for MVP uh, launch, we were recovering from third wave of COVID. We had like barely a team, like team of four people building this out. But we still took additional few weeks just to make sure that our MVP lands in the way that we would want the user to see. If I don't want to be on an app, then I would rather not launch an app like that. So we stepped out from that slightly traditional thinking of getting just a functional product out. We had a product which had all the aspects kind of figured out the equity uh, research, the analytics, more importantly, the UX, every single step that the user goes through has to be an experience in itself. Uh, and that has translated into some of our uh, initial uh, repeat usage numbers. So uh, anyone who has used one service on Liquid right now shows a retention rate, a six, so we can't talk beyond that, but yeah. uh, like in the last six, eight weeks, we have like a 70-75% retention rate of anyone who has used one service on Liquid. And they come back and they look at it again and again and again. And that's where we think that at least from a UX point of view, it gives us a lot of satisfaction that we have built a lot of hurried products in the past. This one, we took time, we did a lot of user research. We have got a panel of users who always are the first port of call. Unless they say yes, we don't go with it. That's and that's the kind of core to it. What product, like from your standpoint, from a UX standpoint, uh, outside of fintech or even in fintech, yeah. what product UX do you really think is gold standard? So see, in India, of course, I think there's one brand which kind of comes to it and everybody talks about Cred, Kunal is on our cap table and we just love the product, we love the way Cred thinks about UX. They've published a full thesis of how, how they think, think about design from scratch and we kind of follow it to a very large extent. Uh, there have been a couple of very cool products internationally. I think Dave being one of my inspirations. Dave is a new Neo yeah. bank and the way they did the Neo bank was very cool. There's a very recent startup, a couple of year old startup in Singapore whom we also met during the FinTech Fest last week. Uh, this is called Snack. It's an insurance product and it is insane the way they have simplified insurance, micro insurance for a complex market like Singapore. I think it's a phenomenal product to look at. But yeah, we do look up to a lot of these uh, startups. We are engaged with a few of those. We actively reach out to them. We talk to them to figure out how did they build their product, what worked for them, what did not. And that just helps us keep our team as small as possible. So we ride on everyone else's. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. So, but that's, that's, that's where we are. But the heart truly lies in the product. And I think uh, that's where I think uh, it's, it's, the initial rewards are very commensurate to the few weeks that we spent extra on building it out. Can you paint a picture of what Liquid looked like in 2028? Yeah. I was going to ask exactly that question. Yeah. No, slightly difficult because yeah. the market and everything else is changing by yeah. the day. And we were just saying that, yeah. like as McKinsey also, five-year strategy doesn't make any sense. It's a one-year strategy. But I think there are two, three core elements to our vision, the way we are building it out. The first vision element is that we want to be everything around equity stock. And uh, we just want to be that, be that one brand which comes out as the litmus test. If you tell a friend that you invest in this particular company, mein invest kar do, your first instinct should be go to Liquid, check it out for yourself, figure out if that makes sense for you or not, and then get into it. So that is one core uh, uh, pillar of our vision, ki everything in public equity stock should be through our platform, through Liquid, and we should play that true advisor's role in times to come. 
eventually what we see is there is a definite ask from our user base who trust us to get into other uh, kind of complementary asset classes. So there is ETF, which we are already kind of working on, which makes complete sense that you do ETF as the diversified product and uh, stocks as the uh, slightly riskier product. Of course, it will need more uh, uh, licensing, right. so to say. Exactly. But that's where we will move. That based on what the user base truly wants, like Aniket talked about this massive funnel, which has like 100,000 people. Hopefully, it will have like a million people by the end of the next year. But we'll move towards what specific segments they truly are asking from us. Like even right now when we started, we were just doing stock picks. Then very quickly we were doing small cases. We were very quickly we were getting more RIAs on the platform to advise them. Very quickly we are now moving to ETF. So every month actually it's a leap towards that. So right now public equity is definitely one area that we want to be deep on. And we are open to a few other elements which will pan out based on what the user base that is using liquid truly wants. Uh, but things that we won't do are also kind of clear to us. I think we won't do things which will just complicate the experience, make it like a that giant app which scares the shit out of a new user, the first time user. Mm. Uh, we would always be very customer experience driven. So wherever we find that people don't have a great experience, whether even it's an asset class like a crypto, where people's experience has been hit over the last say one year or so, that's where we are keeping it at bay, right? Because experience is not just look and feel, it's, it's real tangible returns on a given a product that you're buying. Yeah. So we'll be driven by the customer experience in a very holistic sense. Um, what, 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 what is helpful from a capitalization standpoint? I mean, you obviously know a lot of the names on this group. Um, yeah. what, what is best use of, um, of this group for you? Yeah, so in fact, we are already realizing the best use because some of these guys are there on the cap table. Uh, that's one question that, uh, like, as, as a team also, we wanted to kind of pitch for you guys. Some, a lot of those guys are there. I mean, I shouldn't say a lot, but at least a few of the folks are there on our angel uh, sure. uh, table as we started. We have seen the power of having uh, founders, operators on the cap table in the last six months. I think a lot of our decisions are always bounced off with folks like, say, you or uh, Chenna, and there are so many others who are well-wishing. Uh, so, and now we are in a phase wherein we have gotten to a level of early product fit on a few things, not everything, but some things are firing well. So now we are more confident in terms of the next round, so to say, in terms of how do we want to take in. We intentionally raised the largely angel type of a round because the product was very experimental. People used to say, okay, let's make it, then we So now we are thinking about a slightly more formal a uh, way to value the company, slightly more formal way to get the capital going. We want to spend on uh, growth on a certain point. We have been super frugal, by the way, right? And you know it more than yeah. anyone else. Like, we are at a minimal burn. We want to build it for a, for sustainability. Our operating cost is significantly under control. Uh, so I think capital will become important, but slightly at a subsequent stage. But right now, we do want to unleash a little bit of growth capital on particular aspects. Like Limo is a fantastic success, right? Mm. Hundreds of queries a day and a lot of people coming in. So we could promote some of that. Second is some, some part of the team we would love to kind of expand further. Like we are not putting any effort on sales, for example. Mm. So Kunal needs an army, a small army of people to focus there. So there are two, three of these aspects wherein we want, we'd want uh, capital to be infused. But more importantly, I think the question there, just to summarize was, uh, we have like say 10% of the list or 15% of the list on the cap table. How does it change the life when there are like another 70? It's a good question, right? I think I have benefited hugely from like a very distributed group of people who backed just right. like you did, right? So everyone adds value independent of, at least from my experience, independent of how much holding they have when they invested. I think once they are a part of the journey, it's a binary thing. They're always a part of the journey and then they will help you yeah. in multiple ways. I think... There's an exponential effect. Sometimes people who you don't expect at all uh, can can be super <coughs> valuable. For example, there are people here who are outside the country. So, for example, if there is expansion into products that are outside the borders, it becomes much easier. There are people, of course, who you know are are you know very very knowledgeable about fintech in general. Uh, can be amazing. There are people on this group who are I have realized over the past maybe two years that corporate governance for a growing company is crucial. So solid board mandates, a board voice that is really loud, tangible and helpful to the management is amazing. So you will be able to dip into this pool of people for multiple kinds of 
uh, uh, advice and it it uh, advice support encouragement sometimes just cheerleading man like that's yeah. often times founders just need cheerleading uh, more than anyone else right so um just a good group of people who are who are there i think just genuinely long term patient and 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 are backing you in a very authentic way so i think you should just take that 15% and like kind of extrapolate it uh that's probably what, what, what yeah so that's the other part of it that the comfort level with this list is very high because you know many of those guys and then you have worked with a few of them on the list and it's been like very 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 helpful more mm-hmm. valuable than any capital you could raise and uh, but and what what we will do now is i think 3 of us will just do a quick sidebar sure. we will we will we'll, we'll excuse you guys and maybe go into the sure. room four of you could actually discuss um uh what what would be a good way for us to participate and at least have an anchor point of view yeah. and three hours will also come back and see whether we can reach reach a handshake if possible Absolutely. does that does that yeah. make sense yeah mandar yeah. you guys want more information you want to like ask it now no i am no, good no nothing right now okay cool so okay. give just 5 minutes you guys yeah, can sure, use sure. this area sure 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 no i think uh, just on the business side right i think and i am not a fintech expert but just going by first principles somewhere this idea of advisory with a subscription fee based monetization model is just not giving me a good feeling yeah because i think of who has made big money through advisory i, I don't know i mean my goes to non digital age advisors like mckinsey and so on <laughs> right who have made real big money so i'm just wondering advisory subscription in the digital space correct i agree for me like i think for me the 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 tick marks of course are team founders yeah founders yeah. are yeah. damn good market which is huge right um, and a need which is real yeah there is clear financial illiteracy there is need correct. to educate correct uh, they are the right founder i think they broadly found how to do it you make a great ui ux gamify it through right swipe left swipe celebrate people who have great kegers etc monetization i agree with you like i i genuinely feel they will have to think hard about how will they make money my view is like thoda silicon valley view on this ki you get enough people at a party the party is successful you'll figure out a way to make money uh but that's where i am hmm. Hmm. do you think the go no go will be depend on value would you invest in this company at a low value and not at a high value so i I've, i've got two thoughts going through my mind right one is uh value where i think there are two kinds of questions going through my mind hmm. one is you mentioned content yeah. content creation yeah this is a fantastic team of technocrats if i was to use correct. an old age term right so but whether they have the content dna so that's one thing they have to build correct second is if they have to go away from pure advisory subscription to some kind of transactions now i don't know whether that's a broker's license or a dmat banking license whatever it is that's two hurdles which lie ahead of them yeah. it's a young company they will cross those hurdles i'm sure but given those two hurdles uh, would i invest in this individually perhaps yeah. but i think there's a question there for you uh, shantanu also which is that as barber shop razors edge yeah is this the kind of already well connected company yeah. with how to play questions which they already seem to have angels on board that can help them solve these is this the kind of company that in razors edge you want to fund or yeah. not is the other question value i'm on the edge maybe i would actually yeah invest because i can imagine them overcoming these hurdles yeah to me it was just uh, actually it was the, the question you asked earlier right it's a uh, it's very early they i've no doubt they'll figure it out i mean we all know how much we've figured out over yeah. the years right we you learn as you go um actually you asked a very important question they already have the access they have the access are you the one uh yeah. you know they don't need they don't need they don't need this actually yeah they can they'll be just fine without yeah one of one of the questions they asked was ki if we if if we get rejected huh. will it fuck up our fundraise process oh, no but no. what i'm saying right yeah. now is this right yeah. as an individual investor i'm actually going to talk to them separately yeah i would invest in them as an individual investor at today's value uh i need to talk to Literally, them about the yeah. value yeah. Uh, we didn't actually have that discussion so yeah. one would need to understand their value and so on but i would invest in them as an individual investor okay. i i do have a broader question on uh monetization uh, on monetization and so on which i can talk to them but that's not preventing me from investing yeah but the question of what does razors edge uh, yeah. stand for i think is a pertinent one i think i don't think he shantanu knows that yet 
No, I think it will be actually their philosophy, which is, can we do a risk adjusted investment, which is, hmm. if we have a corpus, maybe we have an exposure view on this, which is, if our average ticket size is 1 crore, in this case, we will say, look, you don't need the capital, but you need the access. For us, this is a high risk, high reward bet. So we are going to limit exposure and maybe we'll put in a smaller ticket size. So we'll kind of index on the lower end of it. Because I think broadly we are we are, we are a go. The question is, it has to be a reined in go. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let's say you didn't know any of these guys. And forget didn't know. But let's say they were not from McKinsey. Hmm. Equally great presentation, same app. Technologically very, very sound. But not from McKinsey. Hmm. Would you still feel uh, comfortable? And I'm using McKinsey only because that's no, Conte. I don't mean McKinsey, McKinsey. Correct. But I mean pedigree, pedigree. Whatever whatever we consider as proxies for pedigree. I agree with you. I think for me, the size of the market and the and the fact that they are gamifying it, that is more exciting than, than what they I do. actually, I agree. To me, that was not a... The no, reason why I was a go. It's not to me yeah. either, but I just wanted to... Yeah. I think it's important that we yeah. keep clarifying that. Especially because you've told me that <laughs> there, is, there has been feedback about yeah. the coincidental yeah. lots of... The McKinsey bias. People. Yeah. yeah. But we'll have to kind of really... No, I think a, a clarification of this being, we do see this as high risk. Yeah. And high reward. Yeah. But also high, high risk. risk. Yeah. And therefore, we want to limit our ticket Exposure. size. I'm actually, I think that's a... Yeah. yeah. And I think they will be richly valued also, just given, given... Pedigree premiums are very high nowadays. Yeah. Same business without the McKinsey would be valued at one-fifth. That's such a pity. Or, no? But it's early stage. So the good part is multiplier effects exist if there's a billion dollar outcome. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is because capital chases good founders always. No, I know. Uh, that It's not a pity that capital chases good founders. It's a pity that labels are what people use to determine what good founders are. What, what other problems? What else would you do? No, no, I agree. So, I'm not... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, wish, I wish there was something easier and simpler. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. First of all, thank you so much again for coming and uh, <coughs> Pleasure if I will speak on behalf of Meghna and Manda. I think very exciting and very educative discussion yeah. for all of us. I think this is something which in general people have inertia to learn about, you know, generally just also fear, right? If I learn more, I will realize how fucked up my, my situation is. So <laughs> just keep it to the side. So very Fair good enough. to hear uh, how you're trying to solve it for, you know, kind of Bharat at large. Um, I think long story short, we want to participate. Um, we would love to be a part of your journey. I think the 85% of us who are not there would love to be a part of your journey. The 15% <laughs> who are there are privileged anyways. We have two questions. Question number one is, I think fundamentally we believe that the monetization problem needs to be solved. I don't think, like yeah. I think Mandar makes a very valid point. Subscription at scale, uh, monetization through advising on subscription yeah. will be very tricky. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Like, no, I was just, uh, and I'm not a fintech expert at all. So it's quite possible that you'll give me three examples, uh, which I don't know about. But at mm -hmm. least it felt first principles basis that rapid growth and reaching scale through a combination of advisory and subscription felt mm -hmm. tricky. Mm -hmm. People who have made it big through advisory, forget subscription, just advisory, mm -hmm. are few and far between and have done that by building a trust-based reputation which has taken decades, right? And, right. Uh, Correct. And, and in the digital space, I'm actually struggling to think of an example that is a successful digital advisory in any space. Right. Not, I'm right. not saying stock market, any kind of advice. Then you add to that subscription, which itself is also generally a tough model to scale again in any space. Then you put them together. So we just felt that, you know, that is one hurdle. We have full confidence that you guys will overcome it. You'll figure it out. Yeah. But, but figure out, table, figure out worthy problem here. Ah, so like yeah. for us, the, 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 the thing was, is there are enough enough people coming yeah. to an awesome party, we'll figure out a way to yeah. get money out yeah. of them. Yeah. Like so that. Basically, market, yeah. we've told you that you've built a marketing engine. <laughs> <laughs> the sales engine will be able to I think absolutely agree and relate to that yeah. because uh, see monetization for us, we are like a three, four month old company correct, correct, in that exactly. sense. And monetization experiments have started in October. Mm. So I think on the so from where we are standing, uh, Anuj and team is key, we will probably uh, in our in our window of investment, Given the exposure is to a slightly kind of, you know, massive slingshot opportunity if it does well, but risk is also slightly higher given state of the business, we might we might be on the slightly lower side in terms of ticket size. Mm. But I think it will be all three of us 
are keen to participate individually and we are, we, we felt the burden of if this is a slightly riskier bet given stage of the company but three of us want to invest then are we doing justice to the other 47 by mm. by by doing that on the side and so on yeah. we're like look man mm. we love the we love you guys we yeah. Yeah. genuinely believe that you're in a big market doing things the right way i think mm. and one of the things is a content creation what are we doing here mm. content mm. creation is the future you guys are doing it in fintech wealth tech mm. and that that dna you will have to build once you build that dna with the monetization mm. opportunity that is kind of with, with with pmf i think will be a category owning uh, play over the next 5 to 10 years so mm. our our belief is high so if you i don't know what you guys, whether you guys want us or not but we would we would love to hold a position in our company if you can tell me what the valuation expectation is and so on yeah no so uh, to the first question of course uh, you guys are already there i think <laughs> having more of the folks that we would want to have on our cap table truly mm. kind of adds to the value that we can create as a joint team. So absolutely, I think the answer, that's why we didn't have a discussion. I was saying that the discussion happened, but it was, of course, not on We should ask him that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you must, you must hear that. <laughs> okay, I think just to take it to logical closure, right, just from a commitment standpoint, mm. we would love to kind of come in with a 50 lakh check. Okay. Okay. Mm. Together as a group. Absolutely. Um, if you are in either of those two modes, either yeah. 2 million to do mm. sharpshooting or 10 million to explore and have a good growth round. Yeah. If both of those have fructify from a term sheet standpoint yeah. in the next, let's say, 60 days, yeah. Yeah. then we will participate in that round. Absolutely. Okay. If they don't fructify in the next 60 days, then will you take the capital or will you say you don't want the capital? Or will you take it as a discount to the next round? If you no, get clarity on this, then it will be so There is an absolute answer that we would get you on the cap table, <laughs> okay. whatever the means is. That's mm -hmm. not like it's, 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 a, it's a blanket yes from our side. Yes. I think. We just want uh, this particular group to be there and a channel to them is golden to us. Okay. So, of course, uh, uh, we would do, if we are not able to drive clarity or we are not clear on what the valuation, etc. is and how the round will pan out, let's do a discount, uh, discounted coupon okay. and, of course, we could do that. Cool. Pandar, Meghna, are you guys comfortable with that? Yeah. Participate with the incoming institution yeah. yep. the round yep. size is very large. Yeah. 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 And if not, then we kind of participate uh, individually at a, dis at a discount. At a discount. Like a 20% discount is okay for you guys? So, yeah. I might as well close it out, no? Huh? <laughs> what? 20 percent is okay, right? Given, uh, we were thinking more like 10%, but oh, yeah, yeah, again. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but again, I mean, this is one negotiation that very uh, kind of... The discount increase. So, if it's 10% in two months, 15% yeah. in four, 20% yeah. in five, and then if six months no round, then we get it the previous round valuation. Okay. So this part, <laughs> this part, no, no, I was saying that this part <laughs> will now need a... <laughs> this this show I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, no, now this part, I was just saying that this part will now need a genuine breakout. <laughs> <laughs> the previous one wasn't a genuine breakout. <laughs> so I think the closure, I think the closure from our standpoint is yeah. we, are, we are keen to come in with 50 lakhs. We are privileged to participate with, with the four of you and your yes. teams. Yeah. I think you are building something amazing. If you raise capital in the next 60 days, get a term sheet or some in principle yeah. uh, letter of intent yeah, from yeah. someone. We'll please consider us a part of that round. Mm. We'll do. If not, let us know what a discount construct would be. We'll but capital from our side is completely committed. We are very privileged to sure. partner with you. Uh, the the privilege is all ours. And Chandra, yeah, exactly. firstly, I think uh, our journey had started looking at you many years back when we couldn't make head or tail of what startup, like McKinsey used to be that ultimate gold standard. Somebody <laughs> leaving McKinsey as a distinctive person <laughs> was like mind blowing. But uh, thank you for helping us take that leap, first of all. Uh, and so many others who have helped us, but uh, I think the privilege is all ours. Amazing. Exactly. Amazing. Maybe so, sure. we actually shake hands on this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sita. Thank Thank Super. Thanks. Thanks so much. much. All the best. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. We do have hampers for you guys. Hold on. We can also shake hands. Well done. Well done. Even all of you are men. And by the way, that's one question we might yeah. have. I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but we have our biggest angels who have been supporting the journey sitting in our houses. Uh, <laughs> so oh, yeah. Kind of, Thank you. This is just half of the firing part. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. I'm thrilled to get into Liquid. Uh, I think just stellar founder group. I think it launched the product four months back. Of course, I think equity investing in India is just starting out. 
um, but it's obviously a tough space, right? So 85 to 90 percent of equity investors in India are financially illiterate or know very little and take sub 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 optimal choices because of lack of information or asymmetry or just delayed information. Sometimes they prioritize the here and now over the long term holds and so on. So it's complicated, but I think Liquid is really trying to do two three things. One is they're trying to gamify investing so the whole right swipe left swipe the entire ux of the product is so good uh, second is i think uh, anuj and team are just brilliant at understanding how analytics and consumer understanding will help take them along the way right and you're seeing that happen already in four five months reaching 100k downloads um, uh, and really making a difference to the consumers who are who are using liquid i think for us the concern was around monetization we were wondering how uh, a company like Liquid or a product like Liquid can monetize through subscription on intellectual consulting of, uh, of, of, of inputs, right? So for us, that was a little bit of a large leap to make. But again, I think we believe there are they're, they're amazing founders working in large markets to solving a real problem. So I think monetization is step two. They'll cross that bridge when they, when they, when, when they get there. Uh, for us, getting in early, uh, being a part of their uh, early round, uh, was was more important. Of course, they're richly valued. Uh, they raised angel capital uh, at a very high valuation when the markets were great. So that's kudos to them. So hopefully, uh, we, you know, we come in uh, at a discount of the next round, and the value on the table is high because they'll they'll build out a billion dollar outcome for themselves and for us. So very thrilled to to be equity holders in in Liquid and be part of the financial revolution that's happening in the country.